I really don't care what your um, what your culture is. I really don't care what your uh, political party is. I don't care what your social status is. If you're hungry, we're gonna feed you. If you need clothes, you're gonna get it. So right now, that's our focus. That's the only thing that's important is that we take care of the people. What do you think of how America has come together over this big giant tragedy? I mean, we were so divided before in so many different ways. And now tell us what, what's going on now. What, what, how you God united now? us. That's what I happened. believe that this was a God thing. You know what? I, I really believe that this is a God yesterday. thing. We don't know what his plan is. Our responsibility is to make sure that we ask to be a part of this continuous history. And so that that's my faith, not to push it on anyone else. But I am so grateful for all people of all religious um, backgrounds, all cultural backgrounds that have come together to make sure that the community is taken care of. And this is not just happening in front of this is happening all across the South America's come together. America has come together. It's united. We are still United States of United America. America. United States of America. Yes. There are still certain divisions in our country, but this is a huge, huge step to positive progress. So what do you think about all the attacks and all the people that were trying to prevent us all from our donations? Our pro you know, all of our donations from all over the country, actually. I mean, we came in from, from Nashville, Tennessee, and a lot of people didn't know that we actually were having escorts because of their of the threats of, of trying to steal the stuff. Has there been theft going on in, in, in the city that, you know, maybe the people don't know about? Um, there have been several, there have not been several accounts of theft going on in the city. There has been. Ha, um, what I tell y'all? We do not have reports, <coughs> uh, excuse me, of theft going on in the city. Yeah, no. I can say... Theft that a lot of times, well, first of all, you're in the great state of Texas, and we can carry, and uh -huh. it's open. So please, Are you carrying? I am not. Oops. I am not. I am. He so, is. However, <laughs> but please understand, just because that Got is more the in case, there. you are not coming to a renegade area. Uh -huh. Just because it's one side Where of town or another like side of town, or what you may hear, uh -huh. we are not renegades here. We are people. loving people. Oh, great state of, of Texas. God bless Texas. <coughs> God bless the great God state bless of Texas. God bless America. I wanted to do a little interview with you too, but so I just started United in. Uh, go ahead and uh, announce yourself. Hi, my name is Tiffany Hamilton from Port Arthur, Texas. And I, I put you on here as councilwoman. Uh, I don't That's know if that was fine. correct I am or not. I'm council with the city of Port Arthur, Texas. And you're still, still get, going very about very your active, job, though. He's still, still taking up for everything the way yes, it should be done. Yes, sir. She was up until 5 o'clock in the morning yesterday getting clothes organized. Oh, I know. I heard her on the radio talking to about us to make a secure long. drop point. And tonight, it looks like it's going to be the same roller coaster. She is out here for us, not for nobody else, but for us. It's hard work. No Never one else. Stops. Only her. No, no, no. There, there are others. There are others that are also in the grind. Oh, so yes. everybody has our role. We just have to play our strengths. And it is, it's a lot different. Um, right now, I'm not married, and I don't have children. Mm -hmm. So my responsibility is different from my counterparts who have families and have children. So we just have to step up and assume our responsibility. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, see, and I want to clear something up because I've been trying to clear it up the whole time, and I've been getting people calling me when I'm out here. Oh, really? When the hurricane rolled in, we were out here in my truck, the big four-wheel drive sitting right back over there because uh, boats couldn't get in where we were going. They were getting stuck. But then we ventured back off. I said, hey, let's go check my buddy, Mike Lucas. He lives in Gillum Circle. Mm -hmm. So we go in Gillum Circle. <clears throat> There's nobody in there. I brought three U.S. Coast Guards with me. And they were just like, where's everybody at? All the boats, nothing in there. I said, why is this not being taken care of? Did we, or did we not see FEMA here? Was that FEMA where we just came from? Yeah. yeah, FEMA had tents set up there, yes. All they right. did a so TJ. Make sure I, before my battery dies. TJ. Okay. Yeah, oh, you're talking about over at TJ. TJ. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah TJ has and FEMA, and FEMA and Red Cross. And Red Cross. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, they're we both. Have, and oh, this is something that's really important. They wouldn't accept what we had. They wouldn't accept what we brought. No, no, no. It's not about them not accepting it. No, I don't think they had room. I don't think they had room. No, I want to be clear. We are trying to follow the protocol of this facility being the distribution point for all of the points of distribution for the city. Yes, sir. This one. This, yes, sir. Okay. So that's, I want to put the word out. Because there was tons and of And this is, y'all see right there, Port of Port Arthur. However, um, 
um, I'll be honest with you, we have to do better with our communication. Definitely. There should be a sign out that says distribution 200 Houston Avenue. We should have that all across our community. Right. So when we have people driving 15 hours away, 20 hours away, two hours away, I don't care if you drove from Beaumont 30 minutes oh, away. Yeah. If you're taking your time and effort to come and support us, then it's our responsibility to make sure that you have clear direction of where to do that. Right. So we are working on that, and I say we, I'm just speaking of community leaders, period, just getting the word out. 200 Houston Avenue is our central point for um, for deliveries. We, uh, again, we cannot express in words how much we appreciate you all. There are different points of distribution scheduled throughout the city, but not only are those the ones, those are not the only ones of where people in the community can come and receive supplies. Correct. There are different churches, different organizations. There are families literally setting up in their front yard, cooking oh, and telling I've them that y'all come eat. So we have, this community has truly, really truly come to Yeah, and see, that's another thing I want to clear up because your, your fingers are on the pulse of the community. And I was getting reports, people telling me to get out of Port Arthur, hotbed, hotbed. And I'm out here at 3 o'clock in the morning, okay? Me and my buddy Jesse right here. Jesse Hill, us two. Okay, in by ourselves. In downtown Port Arthur. We were on Proctor. We were on Gillum Circle. We were, told we were in all that. And they're, and they're there. saying, don't, don't go in something. hotbed. There's no boats. You don't know. That's bull. I, I hear all types There's no of negative stuff about my city. And that's uh, bull. Don't go on the west side of Port Arthur. Those don't are good go people. Don't go downtown Port Arthur. Don't go to the west side of Port Arthur. You don't know nothing about us if no. you think that we're renegading out here. And yeah. I, I apologize if I'm coming across so strong and attitudish. I'm glad you are. if you think that we are running like a little Haiti out here, that is not the case. No. And if you don't come here, then don't speak about here. You're right. So United ask States. before. Please just ask. Just ask before you decide to judge us just ask simply ask before you decide to judge us well, i've got tons of live footage these, of us these, going these in there people right here we met because we were out serving our community right. now this is my brother from another mother <laughs> okay so you gotta you something you gotta get over your emotional status right we as just humans have to stop babysitting people's emotional statuses and get to what's real and what really matters. And that's what was bad about it because I know people down there. Like my buddy Mike Lucas was down there. He spent two days we were trying to get him out. And it was so bad I couldn't get through there. But every time I tried to get to him, and he's right there in Gillum Circle, I would find an elderly woman and pregnant. I'd call Mike, hey, buddy, I can't get to you now, buddy. I'm about to come back. And every time I went in, people went. And I'm like, why is there nobody here? Well, finally, well, they had choppers already going in. And the Coast Guard was with me, and they were... They were uh, right. flying people out. And it's like, this is a waste of resources. All these boats are over there. And then finally, <laughs> I got organized, and I got a crew of six boats to come with me down here. And we launched by the HEB, and we were heading toward everything on this side. And they, somebody called them and said something. They said, oh, you got to get out. There's people with guns. They're trying to steal the boats. They've been... I said, man, we've been sitting out here and, and rescuing people this whole time since the hurricane hit, and not once have we had anybody hostile come to us. I said, as a matter of fact, they want to help us get other people to help rescue. I was like, they were very helpful, very nice. I said, good people, this is not the way, this is not the persona we need to give off down here. We're not now, like that. Now, I, I want to be clear, though. There was an incident that, one incident that I'm aware of at an apartment complex. Yeah, that was a domestic that, dispute or exactly, something. Exactly. That was something domestic right. going on. And it was in addition to that, some of these people were literally freaking out. It was like flight or fight or flight. Right. And know, nobody was there to help them. And they didn't think, no one's here to help me. Here's this boat. Look, I'm putting in so many people that the boat is going to sink. They're just not thinking clearly. Oh. So what we don't want to do is pass judgment on someone's experience that you've never experienced before. Right. In addition to that, we've already gone through so much trauma in our city. When we're going through our recovery, our, our rescue process, then the recovery process, then that long-term recovery process, we don't want to be judgmental causing more havoc to where you're having to now go through that again, needing to recover from extra, you know, hardships from the initial recovery. Yeah, there's no negative I've, I've experienced. You know, when I went in, there's the second day of flooding in here. Mm -hmm. And when I went into the projects, <laughs> I was the first person they seen in this one project. They said, we haven't seen anybody else in here. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm the first person. I mean, it just... Did they approach you with a gun or say, thank you for coming? 
No, I was like, thank you. There ain't nobody. The uh, only yeah. people that had guns was me and my buddy. Yeah. You know, and everybody else that did have something, it was to defend themselves if somebody tried exactly. to loot them. But there was none of that going on. Right. There was right. nothing like that. I mean, we were out here every single hour. We were out here, what, 50 something hours straight. Me, me and Jesse. Five and, o'clock in the morning on that. The night they said it's a hotbed, we were out here till five in the morning. Five yeah, we would shut the engine off on the truck and yell for people. And they hit the siren so we could hear for people hollering for help and we'd sit sometimes 10 minutes dead silence and then we get a report of gunshot i'm like dude we're sitting right here and there is no gunshots going off it may be my truck backfiring because it's getting water in the fuel that may be what y'all heard but there is no gunshots and if you can't uh, decipher a gunshot from a backfire well you, you're not a credible source but the news want to take and run with all this stuff from what i'm hearing and that's however not... you you i mean we also have to take into consideration that's their job. That's what they do. They need ratings. They need points. But I'm saying, sad. Don't don't get your ratings and don't get your points on the backs of my people that struggle. No. And trying that's to not get right. out of water, trying to get their families back together. Some of these families have been separated because they need one person went to Dallas, another person Anybody went to Austin. Questions? So just just utmost. please consider the source. Please consider the source when you receive information. And if you're not sure about it. I'm more than willing to answer your questions. I will give you my cell phone number, 504-236-2018. That's how we're One more time so they can hear me. 504-236-2018. That's how important it is for you to get the truth. And if I don't have an answer for you, then I will let you know that, and I'll find it and then get back with you. I don't know everything, but what I do know is that it's, it's utterly ridiculous for the negative information to continue and not anyone speak up and make i, I just don't know how oh, i know it's, there's no people. words for it there's no words for it it's just bull it's bull we, we're, we're gonna clear all that up though and hey if it has to happen by facebook it's gonna get cleared up the people are right. gonna know the true people down here we're ta yeah we're in the south yeah you know, whatever you want to say but we do not look at others that way and we don't judge like that down here we're all we're all helping each other out we all live in the same community we all love each other we all want to help each other yes sir we're not yes, any way like that like the most problems that you want to talk? like other than a few minor things the most problems that the rescuers out here have had is them doing something that they shouldn't have been doing and making a bad decision to try right. to making wakes somewhere. making a wake or something like that and and, you know, with this uh, negative uh, information. to a situation where somebody's walking up to them trying to get help and it, they perceive them as a threat. So all of a sudden now it's just rough. There's no threat. Help, right? I mean, and when, when, people, when false information is given, we can't help. We're these people's only hope. And just like I told uh, my rescue crew that I work with, you know, there's vacation time, which is, you know, rest and relaxation. This is a disaster area. This, this, this has three R's. Rescue, relief, and revival, man. Think about that and you'll understand what I'm saying. And this man's been doing this a long time. He, he, he went through Katrina and everything, so he, he knows what, it, what everything's about. And we want to appreciate you for all you're doing, too. We just want to thank you for everything you're doing. You're an awesome person. You're just, you're a godsend for this area. I mean, you're out here busting your back and missing your sleep like everybody else, you know? How, how can I have the audacity to say I'm going rest? I have people who've never even stepped their big toe in Port Arthur before are here up 30 hey, hours I'm straight. I'm with you. Okay? Yes, I am right. I'm, yeah, uh, same yeah. thing. Preach it. I've been preaching the same thing. How can I sit home in the AC yeah. and watch TV whenever there's people that still need help and yeah. they don't have that luxury? And and people who are not even from here. Yes. People are showing so much love to our family and friends. All over the country. From all over the country. And I say, I'm sorry, I don't have time for that. I'm going home. Oh yeah, and their babies at home crying, Daddy, where you? I want to see you, Daddy. I miss you. I miss you. I miss you, Mommy. You know, we got that luxury to better go home and see our family. They don't, and we need to keep that in mind about these people that are down here doing that. Doesn't seem real a lot of times until you get that one call. Like we, we got a call about. Uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but a woman didn't want to leave her home because her husband was gone and had not come home yet. But what nobody had the heart to tell her was. The last time she reported seeing him, he was in the water in his truck. And nobody could tell her that the other people around said that he was stuck in the window of the vehicle and couldn't get out. 
Yeah, a lot of heartbreaking stories. Yeah, you heard about that? Yeah. And nobody has the heart to tell them. Oh, it's sad. What are you going to do? Are you going to take what, what little hope these people have from them? Yeah. It's not what we're here for. We're no. We're here to give these people hope. Yeah, it's best to let them, you know, kind of calm the situation, kind of cool down, and then try to get a level head before anything starts getting out of hand. And You know, it's just like we spent... I don't know how many hours that one night looking for a, a gentleman that wandered away. He was an elderly gentleman, wandered away from a, a shelter. They already evacuated him. And we went by his house, went everywhere. We, we couldn't get to his house. We were in the truck. We kept going around trying to get him, hollering for him. They finally found him in the attic. Wow, in the attic. And he was fine. That was wow. my... Mr. Santone. That, that, that was my dog. That was Lulu's um, granddad. What was his name, Mr. Santone? Wow. San Salvador. 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 Look at that. Miss Salvador. Salvador. Yo fui la que te mandé para que te fueran a buscar. I'm the one that actually ordered and called on Zil. Brittany, this is the lady that called in that we were looking. We were we were out looking for. You texted me. Yes, yes. She was texting my phone. I had hundreds of texts for people. That is my little girl's grandfather. We spent hours looking and looking. Grandfather. I called. We're like, there's no way. The car, the truck I was in, couldn't go any any further. I have that on live Facebook feed that I did. Really? It's still on my page of us that looking is, for that him. That is, that is, that is that. Wow! Wanna, thank you so that. much. It was crazy. Oh. We're like, there's no way. As, as, uh, I even say in there, I'm like, if he made it through this, that's a bad dude. Maybe he don't want to be gotten. He, <laughs> he may kick three of our butts trying to get him out. The man don't want back in. He's back in. Remember Mike from last night. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He knew everything. Well, we're going to go ahead and sign off here, y'all. We appreciate y'all for watching. All these people out here busting their butt to make it happen. I mean, coming all over God's green earth. Yes. I'm just asking for everyone across the country, everyone around the world, also please take into consideration prayer for our first responders. There are some things that they have seen that they have never, you couldn't imagine. So these, this is from those that are actually in uniform and those that are volunteering. So please keep them all in prayer and our children. Our children have not started school. They'll be about two or three weeks behind. And so going back into that school setting after you know the long summer break is gonna take them a minute to get back in, in line. So please keep all of those things in mind. Keep them in prayer. Keep us all in thought. And God bless y'all. Thank you. Thank you for even caring to pay attention to this video. And please spread the positive word. Thank this you very is why much. we do what we do. All these people here, man, y'all heard from the horse's mouth, so to say. Not to worry. Y'all want to help Port Arthur? It's all good. Like we've been telling y'all and saying. Y'all come on down. Y'all see that big warehouse I showed y'all a while ago full of everything? They still need more supplies. Y'all bring them in. If you got a case of water, just a case of water, bring it. You know, they'll be more than happy to take it. Canada water, yes, baby I diapers. Are here live Clorox cleanup. Clean up. Yes. Hey. No advertisement for Clorox. Just we're looking for cleaning supplies. Cleaning supplies. Cleaning supplies is a big, big thing we need right now. You want to talk about, you want to talk about a good feeling. Knowing that you're helping somebody out that's in a disaster area is one of the best feelings you'll ever have. Trust me, I know. It is. It has its up and downs. And I, this man knows it more than anything about the roller coaster ride. He's been on that roller coaster ride. And look, been sleeping in his car. Nowhere to sleep. This man needs a place to sleep in bed right now. We got to find a hotel to get this man in tonight because he has had no bed to sleep in. Oh, no, no, no. First responders. First responders and those that are volunteering as rescue workers. 3900 East Parkway, Groves, Texas. 3900 East Parkway, Groves, Texas. We will have somewhere for you to sleep, take a shower, and have a hot meal. Now that's good. We're ready for I told you, you got to take care of the people that's trying to take care of you. It just made this man's night. What? Now you ain't going to sleep in the car tonight, buddy. Awesome. Y'all heard it here. Y'all heard it here. You got a place for the man to sleep, so we go going to get him. I offered him the, the uh, bunk in the bus. What? Can you turn that down? Actually, Oh, come on. I bet, he, I bet he can make his way in there. I probably weigh half as much as that bus. <laughs> I bet you could pull that bus over and run out of gas. I mean, I'll show you all the 
Oh, hell, we used to get in the bus and squat five weeks. We still got clothes. Back of the truck right there, and where are those going to go tomorrow? Yes, and where are we wanting to bring the clothes? If anybody yeah. has any clothes, I know y'all are pretty good. I was actually. He's going to pick on me. I got something to say. Oh, okay. You know, as long as it, as long as it was taking you to turn that bus around, I almost unhooked that trailer and pulled it over here with something. Ah, we had it was a deal. Like two hundred yards. Oh yeah, that's a long way to back it up. Great organizations here open and uh, well, right now they are closed, but most of them have overnight drop off areas. So you could use um, the Salvation Army, the United Board of Mission, uh, Missions Addicts, or Goodwill. So you have the opportunity to, to drop off at those locations. So please, there are people there that are able to take care of them. We do not want to trash any clothes that has been provided to us. But I have to tell you guys, we have received so many clothes last night. Last night, my sister and I, we, and, and along with another team, um, they brought us three dump truck size full of clothes. Dump, wow. dump, dump truck size carriages full of clothes. And we bagged them up and we brought them to those um, places that I just mentioned to you before. So we have clothes, 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 and more clothes. Um, specifically, our children do wear uniforms here, navy shirts, khaki pants, that's something else that could be considered if you're looking for something specific to donate. Um, also, undergarments of all size, new in the package undergarments, new in the package undergarments, please. Yeah, we don't want y'all's dirty underwear. You don't want them. We definitely don't the want them. Yeah, I'll, no, no, I'll say it. No, no I'll say it. No, I'll say it. Please don't send your used dirty underwear. Yeah, yeah. We don't. You don't want them. We, we don't, don't want that. But but yes, we um we want to make sure that all hygiene you know is well taken care of, and you know the the um. Well, I'm sure feminine products as well, feminine, right? Exactly. So the the shampoos, the shower gels, lotions. Um, razors, combs, all of those things are needed because we're going to always use them. Even, you know, months and months from now, we'll, we'll still be able to use them. So I just want to want you guys to know that what you are sending is going to be used and the community will have direct access to it. We do not, we got to work so hard, move this stuff out of this warehouse. We don't want anything just sitting there. Yeah, and I'm going to do another walkthrough on the warehouse because I did a video with me walking through. Yeah, come on, I'm going to do it again just to show everybody that is right now watching on this video what's going on. And possibly when this video ends, maybe uh, Miss Tiffany will, will, will post in the comments some information that uh, may be useful for y'all to, to, uh, to go sure, by. Sure, I, I can make a list. And then she you all even, can choose. You all, you all can choose you um, what you would like to to donate. Again, we appreciate any and all donations, but I just wanted to make sure that your hard-earned money and effort and time is spent on things that I know for sure is going to go directly to a family that's going to be in need of it right now. Awesome, awesome, and, and we we can't thank you enough for what you're doing. I mean, it's. It's awesome how the community pulled together, you know. Yes, and sir. And it's just, it's fantastic what the lack of communication that was at first, how it's just come together just perfectly. It's getting better and better it every is. day. It better is, it is. Yes, sir. Hopefully we'll get a better plan in line for next time if it, God forbid, it happens, but yes, this does happen again. Absolutely. We're all learning from our mistakes. Absolutely. My full-time job is a disaster case manager with a nonprofit in, um, in Orange County. And we've been servicing Orange, Newton, and Jasper County. Please keep those residents in prayer too, because some of them are literally still being pulled out of water on the other side of the bridge, and that's like less than 30 minutes away from here. So please keep them in prayer as well. That's where we're hoping to go next. If I get my big truck going, we're going to be going over there, and yes. hopefully we can help. For you will. You bad. will be able to help. And we're just going to duplicate everything that we've been doing here. We're already sending those same services and sending that same love to them. From what I understand, the water's went up. Has it went up or not? I mean, you, you, you go some, tell me the in truth. In some areas, it has increased. The There's has. Um, a family that I've become very, very, it's become endearing to my heart, the Hearst family, and they are in Newton County. Whoa. And their house is on 10 feet of still, uh, 10 feet still. 
and the very top step, there was water at the top step, just maybe one foot away from getting into their house. Oh, wow. In March 2016, they literally lost half of their house. It was floating down the Sabine River. Oh, wow. So Look. these are the types of families that we're looking to support. Let's just get your reaction to this right here. This comment, this man's been following. I tried to donate furniture and appliances to go to Houston area, and they told me in Arizona they couldn't. Well, we are ready and available to accept furniture and appliances. 200 Houston Avenue and um, Port Arthur, Port Arthur, 200 Texas. 200 Houston Avenue, Port Arthur, Texas. And it was Mr. Chip, Mr. Chip, uh, I did share my phone number earlier. It's 504-236-2018. And even if you want to talk to the family that will actually use the furniture and appliances, we can make that connection too. 200 Houston Avenue, um, Port Arthur, Texas, 77640, and my phone, that's the warehouse where the items can be delivered, and that's right behind me. And my cell phone number again is 504-236-2018. Thank you, and we're gonna go show y'all the inside of this warehouse so y'all can understand what the magnitude of this operation they got going here. I mean, it's unbelievable what they've got going here. <laughs> Yeah, well, I know that the last video I did did have a little run through. Oh, no, 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 they did. Yeah, they did. A guy gave me a tour of everything describing what was what. So this, and this uh, facility from, uh, well, I know Port of Port Arthur. This is the warehouse, guys. Wow. And this uh port of port uh the port is the port uh the ones that, that, that allowed for this facility to be used, correct? And y'all gotta give props to the port. I love the port of port out there. I, I work there. Look at her, checking on everybody. She makes sure everybody's okay. Man over here sleeping on a cardboard box. Man, I, I've seen I've seen homeless men on underpasses got better accommodations than this. <laughs> but she's trying to make it better for him. They just won't accept it right now. He's like, no, nah, I'm good. This is good. This is good. Got to make sure these guys are taking care of y'all. Support our troops, man. This is look. This is what they're doing here. And they're not over there protecting us. They're over here trying to protect us. Support your troops. I don't know if maybe you'd like to speak to something what we got going on here. All of this water, we are so, so grateful for it. If we could at least have half of this in cleaning supplies, I could tell you we'd be so happy grateful. and grateful. So yeah, because the cleaning supply uh, bundle is a little short right now. Things you wouldn't think of normally that you would need to donate for people, you know, hygiene products, cleaning supplies, that's what they're needing a lot of. Uh, Y'all see this whole warehouse here is just, it ain't full yet. It needs to get full. They're, they're getting out, I believe that they said 100 pallets a day at least. Yes, but we're, we're turning it over. We're turning it over day by day. Paper towels, sanitary napkins, tampons, shampoo, lotions, um, diapers, baby formula. Guys, we have been holding so close to our chest the formula that we need to Ah, here we go. There we go. Iberia Fire District, 
in Louisiana and they brought over, uh, amongst some other items, but one of the things that really stood out the most was the baby formula that was for premature babies and those with special needs. So we had a, a family with a little girl who had to eat in about a day and a half because her family couldn't find that formula. Everything else she was allergic to. So please, please um, consider the sources of when people are saying it's renegade out there, don't go, or these people don't care about themselves. That is not true. It's not true. And we love us here. And we're feeling so much love for us from other people in the community as well. We really appreciate it. We do. Thank y'all. Y'all see this warehouse. Look, y'all, this is what cleaning supplies that they have still to go through. But it's, see, it's not a lot. We need a lot more cleaning supplies. So, Thank y'all for watching. Appreciate y'all.